So let's now return to our server. We gotta pick up the pace here, else we'll be here all day. <laughs> so let's return to our server. And so what does it mean to be able to get a value posted? Well, it looks like we want to be able to get values as JSON object. That seems to make sense, right? We don't want to post it in a parameter. So we post it in the body and it looks like this. So we should have a struct that represents or at least have this field so we can decode the JSON. So why don't we then create, um, have a model so that we can then um, store values in. So where should our model, model be? Well, later on, we're going to want to use the same model for not only our whole microservice, but also for the con counter microservice. So it seems like all three of our microservices need to have this value. So let's put it outside of the server. And so what we'll say is we have model and let's just call it count data transfer object. Let's just call it that, right? Now we can do data transfer object that go and then package model. No, this needs to be capital because we want our JSON thing to be able, JSON um, decoder and encoder to be able to access it. And we can use, I don't know, int64, it doesn't really matter. We could just use int and there we go. That's all we need. And now let's go back to our server. And what we will say is when we get a value, we have to read it from the request, the request body and decode it. So let's do that. So we'll leave this message there. And so one of the things we want is a counter, a new counter into which we can decode, right? So M-O-D-E-L model that count, let's have that. And we want the body of our request. So request that body. Now we have the body, our reference to the body anyway, but we still have to read the data out of the body. So we can read all the bytes and then have a bytes of buffer and then ask JSON, say call the JSON on Marshall to on Marshall just that set of bytes. But instead of doing that, what I'll do is I'll say JSON that new decoder. And then I'll say I want you to decode this body and actually do the decode. I don't need to save a reference to the decoder because I don't plan to use it. And the thing I want you to decode into is this value, um, this variable C, which we know is a pointer and we need that because we're going to be updating it. So otherwise it will be just a copy. And then this function, decode function, returns an error. So let's check and see if there was an error when we tried to decode it. Maybe uh, the, someone is sending us this value made a mistake. So if there's an error and you couldn't decode it properly, let's do log ros and we're going to warn. So warn f and there's no point in doing like a fatal or anything. Somebody sending in valid value, just don't accept it. Just set, return a warning. So we'll say unable to decode, you know, counter and the value. And that's the error message. We should also return a, you know, like a good HTTP error handle, um, error code that says like, you know, invalid values or some invalid value or something like that. So let's just do, um, set the response that write error and status code HTTP that status. You see, we have internal server error. Um, we have accepted bad gateway, bad requests, all this other stuff, right? Forbidden, all this other stuff, forbidden, all this other stuff. So I think bad requests seem to be um, most appropriate for what we're doing here. So we'll set that error code and then we can probably write the same error message that we wrote to the console here, to the terminal. We can actually write that. So we'll do something like FMT that F print F and let's do that. So we'll send that back and we have to return because this is how um, the handlers work.
Well, if there was an error, it means we got to decode that value properly. Then we can now say that, oh, let's store it. But where should we store it? Well, for now, I'm going to store it in a global variable. So I'll call it last count um, or last value. Um, yeah, let's call it last count. And I'm going to do C that count. Now, we don't have that variable yet. So let's put it up here. It's a global variable. So var last count is an int. Okay, because that's what we use inside of our model. So there we go. And then, um, why is this complaining? Undeclared value, let's see. Maybe it's, oh, I don't need colon, uh, I need equal. All right, so there we go. And then um, that's it. Our request is finished and everything should be good. So let me save this. Um, why am I getting, is not used. Model value of type, when model is not used. It is to use. Oh, they're supposed to be equal. There we go. All right. So, counter. Yep. Counter. That's the field. Okay. So now we have this. Um, we don't know if we're actually, this is successful. So far, we are doing this. We see okay. Um, we don't see an error. So we can assume that everything is working fine. Um, Maybe it, I don't want to stop it to, to create an invalid value, but let's just go ahead and assume that that's working. And then now we'll try and implement our get. Well, get is pretty simple. Get is just simply writing back to the um, whoever calls us the same value that we've stored before. So that simply means that we should create a counter, right? So new counter let's say it doesn't actually have to be new but let's say we have a new um, model that count and we'll set count that counter equals to the last value that we got json we have to create a json um, thing json that encode new encoder new encoder and where are we encode into we encode into this um, writer and then we'll say encode and we want to encode this value c and of course this can fail also um, but i'm going to ignore the error because if we fail to write it then oh, i guess let's let's write it out so at least we know it himself we can't really do anything with the client so we're going to say um to encode counter yeah let's do that okay so that's look like that all right so let's see and so here we go we can see we're sending and we're receiving it's working perfectly fine we're getting that value 